So how many population now? How many billion of people now? Chris, if you can answer, you can go home early today. How many people today? Seven. Seven billion. Lawrence may say in 2050, how many billions people? Can you guess how many in 2050? Nine. Nine billion people. <coughs> and he say five factors will affect our life in 2050. Number one. Oh, before this one. Number one is uh, globalization. Number two, climate change. Yeah, nowadays we have problem with climate, right? In fact, my friends in Singapore are very worried. My friend, in anybody from Singapore? Very worried because every year the water, seawater increasing. So they are thinking uh, maybe someday they will go back to Malaysia again. Okay. Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Number three is the well, this thing is moving. My ears is not big enough. Number three is the demographics. People who are entering the workforce are different from our generation. And number four is the natural resources which will be depleting. Maybe we need a new uh, source of uh, energy. And the last one is the technology. So we have a uh, wait. Uh, how to go back? Okay, this one shows the population seven billion now. Internet user is three billion. So we have those uh, using social media. <laughs> I think most of you are using social media. You are contributing to this number two point seven billion using the social media. Okay. Okay, are we preparing the kids, uh, our children for the future or the past? Are you willing to prepare your children for the future or the past? Future, of course. <sighs> Whoa, this is slow. Okay, but school is not like hamburger. Why? <laughs> hamburger, you can get how many minutes you order from McDonald's? How many minutes you can get your McDonald's? Maybe five minutes. But children is different. It's not like McDonald's. These are McDonald's model <laughs> of children. <laughs> because English, we say, in English we say we need a village to raise a, a child, right? <clears throat> okay, this one is my favorite uh, animal. What is this? This is orangutan. Can you find orangutan in Thailand? No. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> orang utan is Malaysia in Borneo. Huh? Orang utan is from Malay language. Malay say orang is human. U -u Hutan is jungle, so jungle men. Orang utan is jungle men. But in uh, Canada, the orang utan is the smartest animal in the world because their brain are bigger. They are bigger, brain are bigger than human beings, you know. So in Toronto, in a zoo in Canada, they are training the orangutan to design on iPad. So the orangutan can design on iPad, not only the orangutan. The mother orangutan are training the child, the baby orangutan, how to design on iPad. If you don't have iPad, you are worse than orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I'm jo just joking because I cannot make that conclusion yet. Okay. We believe that uh, technology transforming our life, work, play. Why this is slow? Huh? Very slow. Because maybe as I uh, away from my computer. Okay. This uh, this was my car. Mercedes Benz. I sold it, now I'm using Lexus. Eh? <coughs> so you can put a lot of things in uh, the car, including your laptop. Uh, you have big screen. <coughs> oh, uh, but sometimes you have to stop dreaming and get back to work here. Yeah? 
Because some country has technology, some country don't have technology. Which country are producing technology? Tell me, which country are producing technology? Germany, Japan, Korea. Which country are using technology? Malaysia, Thailand. Which country don't have technology? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> Technophobia? Yeah. <clears throat> Usually if among, sorry, the senior people. Senior people, sorry, because some of you are technophobia. You're afraid of technology. Like my old professor in my uh, university, I told him, why don't you use PowerPoint? Because we are training our students using PowerPoint. He is using the chalk and talk. He's still using the chalk and talk. How many of you are still using talk and chalk? Chalk and talk? Okay, don't, <laughs> you doesn't admit. It's okay. Okay, he doesn't use. And I say, why don't you use PowerPoint? We are training our students to use PowerPoint. And he answered, he answered me. He says, I have power but no point. <laughs> so make sure when you use PowerPoint, you have both power and point. Okay, Jeffrey Sass, who wrote the book, The End of Poverty, <laughs> says that uh, people are not only divided by ideology but also technology. Some countries have technology, some don't. Have. So we can use technology to help us, especially in our work performance, enhance teaching, facilitate learning, and our research and development. <coughs> but this is from one step forward in technology, two step backward in pedagogy. <laughs> Even though we have the technology, but our pedagogy is still weak. That's why our students are very boring in our classroom. Yeah? Especially this one. Can you read? Everyone in my... Can you hear me? Can you hear? Okay. It says, uh, everyone in my biology class voted against dissecting a frog, but we almost had enough vote to dissect the teachers. Now, student doesn't want to dissect, cut the frog. They want to cut the teacher. Why they want to cut the teacher? Why they want to cut you? <laughs> I hope you are a teacher. <laughs> Why they want to cut the teacher, not the frog? Yeah, because the teacher is so boring, they are teaching themselves. Especially mathematics teacher. Sorry. Are you a mathematics teacher? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have one uh, teacher. When I was in United States, I was one uh, old mathematics teacher. Every time he went to the class, he just went to the blackboard and wrote and solved the problem. Every day he solved the problem. So every day he getting smarter and the student getting dumber because he the one who solved the problem. So my naughty friend who is American, one day before he entered the classroom, he put the center full play playboy. You know playboy, a uh, girl without clothes, put on the blackboard because he came to the class and faced the blackboard. <laughs> so my friend want to test whether this uh, teacher want to see these uh, photos. And lo and behold, and he went to the classroom and he didn't, didn't even look at the pictures. How about you? If you some of your students put the centerfold playboy on the blackboard, what do you do? Who say, damn, who's please tell me who putting this picture on the blackboard? But he didn't say anything. <laughs> so the teacher is very sensitive. But he was very strict. He said, eight o'clock. If you didn't reach the classroom 8 o'clock, I will lock the door. And he would lock the door. Every time he locked the door at 8 o'clock because he doesn't want the people late. And one guy, he's the one who late and the student closed the door. <laughs> Please help me. Why this thing is not moving? Because you know, because our students have problems. They don't know how to solve the problem. Yeah? Because another thing is maybe the teachers. Yeah? 
So what is our attitude toward the technology? I like this uh, cartoon. It says, someday robots will do this job. These are two cleaners. They are cleaning the barn of the horse. And uh, one of them say, one day, robot will help us. We don't have to clean the barn. So the other guy say, what will we do then? Because we don't have to clean the barn. Because the robot will help us. So what he answer? Yeah, the answer is clean the robots. <laughs> Even though you have the technology help you, but your attitude is still want to clean the things. So you clean the robot. And how do people perceive school? This is school. Normally, we have a lot of students. Students see school like prison. Yeah, the students see school like prison, jail. Why? Why the students see uh, school like jail? Why the students see school like jail? Because the rule of school and prison is the same. Rule and prison have the same rule. You have to wear the uniform, you have to follow all things. So the students are very boring with the school. Okay? So parents see is a heaven school because why the parents see school is heaven? Because they can send their children. They don't have to babysit the student, right? They ask the teacher to babysit their student. Their, and the teacher sees it's like a lamb. Sheep. The teacher sees this school like a sheep. Very difficult to control. Anybody of you a uh, sheep keeper? <laughs> okay, stress. Teachers, why does the teacher stresses? These are list of the things that make teachers stress. How many are stressful teachers here? Raise your hand. That's why you come to conference, right? <laughs> to escape from the school. <laughs> I know. Okay, in philosophy terms, we have three goals of education. Number one, we want to seek knowledge. Number two, if you have more education, I think, or I believe, we can have more well-being. We can enhance our well-being. We have more educated. We know how to handle the food. We know how to handle the, our health and so on. And the number three is work. Because without uh, education, you might not be able to get a good job. Okay, but education is not about information. Education is not only about knowledge. Education is about wisdom. How you raise your child, your children, from getting knowledge to getting wisdom. We have a lot of things in this era that students are very smart in, in their knowledge, but in terms of wisdom, they don't have the wisdom. They don't know how to deal with you, with the teachers. They don't know how to deal with the other people. <clears throat> And Socrates say, wisdom begins in wonder. Oh. Okay, new pedagogy. What are the new pedagogies in the digital era? What are the new pedagogies? We know pedagogy, we know andragogy. What else do you know about pedagogy? You don't know? Okay. I tell you, we have Pedagogy, we have pedagogy, we have cybergogy, three more goji, <laughs> gojis, gojis, plural, <laughs> plural. What is how pedagogy? Uh, we need students to more self-independent. What is pedagogy? We have tell them how to work with other students because nowadays they are very difficult to work because they are working and facing their handphone. Number three, cybergogy, how they use online. As our previous speaker told about uh, online MOOC. Okay, these are apps. Yeah, you can serve the internet and uh, use all the apps that are relevant. These are for mathematics, STEM. These are for science, example. These are for languages, STEM, science, technology. 
engineering. And now we are moving from web 1, now web 4. What is web 4 all about? Web 4 is about artificial intelligence. The machine that we are dealing now are like human, you know. Example, if you have iPhone, there is a personal assistant. What is the name of personal assistant in your iPhone? Siri. How about uh, Samsung? What is the personal assistant of Samsung? You don't have? Hmm? Big? Oh, okay. I thought it's Galaxy or something. Can I have another one? Oh, okay. Example. <clears throat> okay, someone uh, asks uh, Siri, are you human? Siri will say, uh, does it matter? And the uh, guy say, yes, it's better. I want to ask you, are you human? And Siri say, I thought so. Answer my question. The guy say, uh, are you human? And Siri say, close enough, I will say. Close enough. Please, next. Oh. Ay okay. Someone call Siri. Uh, uh, Siri, can you call my boyfriend, please? And Siri say, which boyfriend? Because Siri have uh, already, uh, you know, trace which one the number that you call most. And he say, why? If you have more than uh, one wife, say, uh, call Siri. Call my wife and say, which wife do you have? <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> that's it, Joshua. Is there anything else I can help you? Uh, Siri say. And uh, Joshua asked Siri, will you marry me? And Siri say, my end user licensing agreement does not cover marriage. My apologies. Yeah, sometimes this is a favorite uh, question to Siri. Uh, can you marry me? I want to marry you, whatever. Okay. Someone uh, called Siri and said, can you murder someone for me? And Siri is uh, reply, I found three mental health agencies fairly close to you. Yeah, maybe that you are crazy, you know. Okay, and this are robot who now is a lawyer. <laughs> now uh, the lawyer are using robots to argue the court. <coughs> I'm not sure whether the court can accept a robot as a lawyer. <coughs> so we have from... Uh, Four phases, now we are moving to a digital intelligence. Yeah. So digital intelligence could include everything of this thing that including social, business, banking, operation, and so on. And 25 million jobs will disappear. 25 million jobs will disappear. 40% of the company will be out of business and 25% of the world GDP will be by the digital, digital, digital business. These are the work have a risk in the future will be diminished. Yeah? Example, accountant. What else? Taxi driver, taxi. <laughs> in the future, there is more taxi. Only Uber, Uber. You know Uber? You have Thailand, Uber? Yeah, okay. Yeah, job with this wheel, taxi. Uber versus taxi. <laughs> but uh, Albert Einstein say, I fear that technology will surpass our human interaction. The world have a generation of idiots. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to be very careful with digital uh, era because it has positive and negative things that you have to be careful. Problem 69, if the child complain to the mother, what the mother will do? The mother will scold the child. And now, today, if the son complains to the parents, the parents will go to the teachers and scold the teacher. Okay? Have you experienced that? Yeah. Okay, this is a model of teacher education. What is the center, actually? So we have the center is the learner. We have to have provide the motivation, guidance, relevant curriculum, and the good assessment. 
Okay, we have to move from uh, traditional teaching to the more of the contemporary learning strategies because the students are more advanced than us. Okay, we used to have this thing, lecturing, classwork, memorization, textbook, and then we move to another discussion, problem solving, group work, and what else can we provide the student with besides this uh, pedagogy? Now we are more focused on project-based, project-based learning, work-based learning. Why is it important to give a uh, project-based? Because I ask and I answer my question because you are very slow. <laughs> because project will include all the skill that you need. Which teaching method were most likely to retain learning? Which one? Is it reading? Is it uh, listening? Is it uh, lecturing? Which methods will retain most of the learning? Anybody can try? Which method will retain the learning most? Active learning? The answer is teaching others. Peer teaching. If you teach others, you yourself must master the knowledge. Okay, authentic learning. I go fast. Now we have different type of learners in our classroom. Okay, I will want to give you this model for your teaching, shape model. If you didn't get anything from my lecture today, you should apply this model in your classroom. Number one, shape is S, tell stories in your classroom. Two, put some humor in your classroom. Vary your activities, vary your presentation style, give a lot of example. This is a shape model that you can apply in your classroom. Okay? Number two. Because Plato said those who tell story will rule the world. And another model I want to give you is epic model. What is epic? Students are basically experiential. They are need to hands on. They need to use their hands, not only their mind but their hands. Participatory, image driven. When you uh, come to the school, make sure you have something they can look at. Not only you, they can look at, but <laughs> the visual. And then must be connected to the real world. When I was uh, taking calculus in high school, I don't know the hell. What the hell I'm going to use with calculus? But when I go to engineering, then I know why calculus is very important. Because they are connected to the real world, how to solve the problem in the real world. But in high school, I just memorized the formula. Okay? What's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture? Tell me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are expecting the child will be the computer and the man, uh, the old man with the newspaper. But now the reverse. <clears throat> There's some joke with the newspaper. Yeah? A wife, you know, looking at the husband reading newspaper every day. So the wife said that to the husband, I wish I'm a newspaper. So the, <laughs> uh, the husband said, why? Because you look at the newspaper every day. So I wish I'm a newspaper. So the husband say, yes, I wish I'm a newspaper. So the wife say, why? Why you want to be a newspaper? So the husband say, because I get a new newspaper every day. <coughs> you are not laughing, you are very slow. <laughs> okay, well, this is the biggest fear of our student. When the signal is very low. <coughs> The Wi-Fi signal very low, uh, hanging, number two is hanging, number three is battery is very low, right? Not only our student, the old student also very afraid of this. The old student is you, huh? you. And then when they get a Wi-Fi signal, they will tell everybody, we are family. 
And this is the favorite of our student, cut and paste, copy and paste. Sometimes we receive the assignment and look the same, you know. Just the name is different <laughs> because they cut and paste from their friend. And this is the way they take notes. It's okay, you can take notes, but make sure my photo is here. <laughs> this is the way we take notes nowadays by computer. But new emerging technologies sometimes often with <laughs> opposition, you know. <laughs> Not all technologies will be accepted. There's a dinosaur. Have you seen dinosaur lately? Have you seen one? Yes? No? Oh, in the movie. Okay. I thought you saw someone real. <clears throat> okay. Lester Turo, MIT economist, says, we are watching the dinosaur die, but we don't know what will take their place. So, Who's going to take the place of the dinosaur? Tell me. Who's going to take the dinosaur? Please. Traditional teachers. This will be <laughs> disappeared. Yeah. Why the traditional teachers? Why they are going to like a, a dinosaur? We have 19th century classroom, still have, yeah? I don't know about Thailand. In my country, Malaysia, we still have this uh, type of classroom, very big. We have 20th century curriculum and teachers. And of course, we have 21st century learners. So they are more advanced than the teachers. Okay, let tell, let's see how many of you are baby boomer, boomers, 46, 64, born. How many of you born 46, 64, including myself? I'm baby boomers. How many baby boomers? The old guy, the old ladies. You are in baby boomers, don't lie to me. Okay, how many of you are generation X from uh, 65, 81? How many of you are X generation? Where is my... <laughs> Thailand is very interesting. This is the first time I saw this thing like this. <laughs> okay, how many of you X generation? Why we call you X generation? Why we call you X generation? Crossing. No, because you are the lost generation. Lost. <laughs> how many of you are Y generation? 82, 2001. Y generation. Raise your hand. Wow, you are the majority. Clap. Yeah, majority. What happened? <laughs> oh, what happened? <laughs> the white generation make a problem. <laughs> white generation. Say, white generation. I'm not a white generation. Why are my pictures there? Can you? I hope you're going back to the <laughs> PowerPoint. If not, I'm going to stop. That's the problem with technology. Sometimes the technology disrupts your presentation because technology is very dumb. Ken? Can or not? Can or not? Not cannot. Okay, good. Move forward. The Y generation, I'm going to tell you what happened to the Y generation. Oh, you want me to move?
Well, almost there. Almost. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, why generation? The most. How about the digital native? How many of you dig digital native? 2002. Oh, you, yeah, the red, uh, the red girl. Yeah, you are the minority group in this room, but you are the majority outside. Okay, so this is type of uh, generation Y. The father says, how sweetie, how school to die. And she say, you can read all about it on my blog, dad. She already written that thing in the blog. But why? Oh, this is why we call it <laughs> why. Why we call you generation Y? Because you are wearing like this one. Hey. You are wearing this thing. Why generation? <laughs> Okay, uh, this is the Y generation. They like this one in their classroom. They like innovation. They like speed. They like customization. <laughs> wow. Okay, innovation is very important. Can you uh, push for me? Is it possible that you push for me? Okay. <clears throat> okay, what is innovation? What is innovation actually? Something that you invent new thing. Sometimes it's from the modifying the new thing, yeah? the, the existing thing. Okay, what is this one? Horse. Anybody say it's horse? Raise your hand. It's a horse. Yeah, you are the old one, the old horse. <laughs> okay, how come the horse become a frog? It's a frog, right? See again. It is a horse. Many of you say it's a horse, right? And how it became a frog? Why it became a frog? Perspective. Innovation is about perspective. How you look at things from different perspective. Okay? When I started teaching uh, university 25 years ago, or now 30 years ago, and I think there's only one solution, one answer, and one idea, but I'm wrong, because there's a multiple solution. Okay? In increasing complex world, sometimes all questions require new answer, right? Maybe two plus two. I like this uh, teacher. What is the square root of 9? The square root of 9 is 3. True, false, who cares? For me, who cares if you remember that? Is it solve a problem? <laughs> Creativity is connection. Okay? You can connect things from the old ideas to the new ideas. And what is important is improvement. What can this innovation improve your pedagogy? What can this thing improve your work? And so on. Whoa. Lo <sighs> ah, can we call this innovation? Let's look at these photos and tell me whether it's innovation or not. One. Is it innovation? Easy. You can put your... <laughs> tissue on your head so that every time you sneeze you can use the tissue right but is it innovation or not okay you want to use it or not no why you don't want to use it because you are going to look stupid right so it's not innovation because innovation is something new but useful but this is something new but not useful because people are not going to use it how about second one come on yeah, easy, noodle, don't splash on your face. Is it uh, innovation? Are you going to use it? No, you are not going to use it, it's not innovation. Anything that you're going to use is innovation, but this one is not. What is the characteristic of uh, innovation? Must be new and useful. And see from different eyes. Okay. Come on. I 
I think we need to improve this uh, this thing, right? Huh? You got a new one? Not yet. <laughs> okay, secret of genius is carry the spirit of child. Sometimes you need a child uh, childhood in your spirit because child is more innovation innovative than the old people. Sometimes they are so innovative and they wear the Superman uh, clothes they want to fly. You know? <clears throat> I remember my uh, five years old child coming from kindergarten. I uh, told her, what did you learn from uh, kindergarten today? And she say, I learned parts of my body. She replied in English. Okay, I want to test her, say, what is this hand? What is this hair? What is this eyes? What is this nose? What is, what is this? Tongu, tongu. I say, no, it's not. Tongu, it's tongue. Say, oh, the teacher says tongu? The teacher says tongu. And next day, I test again and tongu again. It must be from a good teacher because the thing is uh, become permanent to her. That's why it's dangerous for a teacher because when you tell something wrong, the child. Even when I look at my student book and I saw this sentence, it says, Ali. Ali put up the book on the table. Is it wrong or right? Ali put up the book on the table. Wrong. I say it's wrong because the past tense of put is still put, it's not put up. And say, oh, the teacher say, put it. The teacher say, yeah, five minutes. So, who's wrong? Five minutes, I'm going to stop. Okay, to ask critical question. To be critical, to be innovative, you need to ask question. Because discovery begins with question, right? What is the discovery begin with question? Anybody knows? Example? <clears throat> gravity. Who found the gravity? Who found the gravity? Sir Isaac Newton. Last year I was in Cambridge, was a, also a keynote speaker, and Dr. Uh, Anirudh also there. And the uh, apple tree of the Newton is still there. The apple tree. After 200 years, huh? the apple tree is there. What happened to the what happened to the apple that makes Newton found the gravity? The apple dropped on his head. The apple dropped on the Newton head. Of course, a lot of people saw the apple, you know, fall down. But Newton asked why it drops, and he found the law of gravity. And Newton in Britain, if Newton in Thailand, the durian drops on his head, <laughs> he will not have the chance to think about gravity. <laughs> so what happened is there is no gravity. What happened? Tell me what happened is there is no gravity. Everything will be floating. So it's very difficult to go to the toilet because everything is floating. So thanks God we have gravity. Okay? So another uh, example, <clears throat> these are all questioned by the uh, scientists, where the cosmos come from. Uh, very difficult, because why we remember the past, not the future? Okay, these are all uh, questioned by the, <clears throat> okay, we have the brain, left brain, Right brain, how many of you are left brainer? Good at numbers. How many of you are good at numbers? You are left brainer. How many of you? Raise your hand. Nobody? How are you? Right brainer. More in arts. Most of you are no brainer because you didn't raise your hand. <laughs> okay, Howard Gunner say we have multiple intelligence. Okay. Body smart, human brain. Okay, uh, poet by 
Emily Dickinson say brain is wider than the sky, and brain is deeper. Okay, last one. I'm going to finish up. I will finish with a puzzle. Okay, one day you are caught by the poachers. Poachers saw you, uh, think that you saw them and report to the police. So in order to save them, they caught you and put you on the tree and tie you. And the lion is waiting to eat you. Okay, the lion is waiting to eat you. So what are you going to do? And uh, you know, the candle is burning. If the rope is... Uh, yes, I know. Let me finish the puzzle. If not, I will tie you up in the tree. <laughs> okay, what happened? How to save your life from the lion? Become the food of the lion. Your survival hinges on the rope staying intact. There is no one around you to help you. What to do? Because as soon as the fire burn the rope and the rope uh, snatch, then you become the food of the lion. How going to save some of my students say, ah, you just pray because you're going to die anyway. <laughs> so, what to uh, solution? The answer. Sing a happy birthday to the lion. <laughs> happy birthday, lion, and the lion will blow the candle. <laughs> Okay, this is not logical, but it's a type of innovation outside of the box. Thank you very much for your attention. I have a lot of things, but... Thank you so very much, uh, Professor Rashmi. Unfortunately, we are running out of time and uh, a bit uh, later behind the schedule. Uh, thank you so very much for your thought-provoking and uh, very entertaining presentation. Thank you. Thank you.